Hello my soccer universe! First review video with a new background and as you can see I still can hang the jerseys but you will see in uh, other videos how much more flexibility I'm going to have now but for the review videos I will keep up. I uh, keep on putting up 12 shirts um, in some order back there. Isn't it great to have Serie A back? Personally for me uh, it always ends kind of the winter break when I get the first taste of Serie A and also when it's grey and windy outside and then you watch a match from Salerno, sunshine, 16 degrees, makes it all feel nice and fuzzy uh, for me. And then if your favorite team also starts the new year with a win, enough said, I'm very, very happy. However, uh, Milan's performance, we will talk about it, is not the big one to talk about here. Uh, it is all about Napoli suffering the first league defeat um, in round 16, so 15 games unbeaten. And that's the key here. We are only round 16. There is so much still to play. Napoli still have a commanding lead over the rest, but Inter uh, really took Napoli to the sword and really um, put down a marker that, you know, you gotta count on them. You gotta count, count, count them. And this Milan fan here is probably the least happy about it. Uh, in a way, I was hoping for a 4 4 4 draw because it's getting behind Napoli. It's getting quite cozy and tight between some teams that uh, at the beginning of, of the season I thought they are well behind. No, they are definitely not. But yeah, bravo Inter for that. Um, the Roman teams had also very differing uh, experiences. With Roma barely hanging on to a win over Bologna, whereas Lazio go to Lecce and lose there, which uh, is kind of one of those uh, results. And signs of life for a few uh, relegation threatened team. I'm wearing some Dora, they got a pretty big win at Sassuolo. And also Verona, who have not been good this season at all. Getting a draw away at Torino might also be maybe a slight turnaround moment. And what about Juventus? Whee! I was also hoping that they drop points at uh, Cremonese like Milan did before the World Cup. Uh, yeah, almost. Almost. The Cremonese probably would have deserved to get something out of that game. Talking already so much about the games that uh, let's get into it and we'll start Salen Salenitana Milan. For about 10 minutes, Salerno was pressing the heck out of Milan. They didn't know how to deal with that. However, Leo misses already one chance, I think around the 8th minute. And then a uh, ball comes after a high press to Giroud, who plays into the Tonali. Wide, going deep onto Leo, who is not offside, goes around the goalie, uh, Ochoa. And uh, although it's a really tight angle already, he manages to pull it in. And that turned the game around because from that moment on, Milan was super dominant. Um, they got a second one through Tonali shortly thereafter, but honestly, it should have been already three at the half. Giroud uh, really desperate to getting a goal and never really got it. Uh, but also, there is it actually looked for that this is a makeshift Milan squad, still Tatarogiano playing because Menyo is still injured. Um, it looked actually really convincing, I have to, I have to say. This was uh, quite the big performance. From uh, the from Milan, yes, they let it slide in the second half, and that's only the one thing. But they still created chances, and it should have been three nil. Brian Diaz, if he lets Tomori shot in, he touches, he comes out of offside. Yes, it had had to be offside. Um, Ochoa making a few really great saves, uh, namely uh, one on Giroud, and then coming back, Bonazzoli scores. Right off the big save, a uh, big double save, I even remember. Bonazzoli scores, and I'm thinking, this is a game that never should have been tied. And yes, Salernitana then tried to make, uh, tried to push forward. However, still, it was more Milan who had the chance to get the Lare, almost getting close to the second one. Again, Ochoa, his hand in there. Without Ochoa, this would have been an easy, easy win for Milan. With Ochoa, it got tight, and then actually, poo. If they would have dropped their points, I would have been really, really angry because that was a game you squarely had, had him back, and the 2 1 score is not reflective of what happened despite Salernitana really being nasty <laughs> for the first 10 minutes and for the last 10 15 minutes after they had scored uh, that goal. But then in, in, in the end, I think it's a routine win, and three points is all that you want. As I said, Sampdoria also getting a quick double, 25th and 28th through Gabbiadini and Augello. 
We are Berardi can only pull a penalty back, giving Sampdoria vital three points because they are really, really relegation threatened. So that was a rather big one for them. Uh, Torino, I saw a little bit of Torino against Verona. Uh, Verona taking a lead through Juric, uh, header just before the uh, half, Lazovic last, last cross, and then Miranchuk with a really good, good choice, 64th, 1-1. One, one. Um, I think Torino probably had a little, little, little bit more of, 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 of the game, but, you know, a point for Verona, a relegation threatened, and, you know, with a really tough game ahead, it's probably more than they could expect. While I was doing the background here, I had actually uh, a Roma's game against Bologna on, and it started very well for Roma early on with Pellegrini con uh, converting in the sixth minute a penalty, and you really thought, yes, Roma, maybe you get something going. You will, uh, you you need you need the points def des des desperately. Um, and Bologna had a really hard time getting their strikers, namely Anatovic, into play. So Roma actually was uh, having control of the game. However, uh, there were a few things in the way you have to worry. Zaniolo had to come off, then Abraham came on for him, um, seemingly with in, in injury, then later on. Uh, Dybala had to come off, so yeah, um, the longer the game was, the better Bologna got into the game and actually had chances, uh, and especially in stoppage time, they were really pressing for that equalizer that almost came, wasn't it, for um, um, Abraham clearing off the line, I think before that, I think they hit him the outside of the post, there were really some nice actions in there, probably Bologna would have deserved the point, but yeah, Roma finally get a win at the Olympico again, looking not very convincing though. But when Roma wins and Lazio loses, the Romanisti are definitely happy and Lazio lost at Lecce despite falling behind, um, going ahead um, through Immobile in the 14th, but Strefazza in the 57th and uh, Colombo get Lecce a pretty big win and uh, Lecce is probably a team that is going to stay in Serie A, Sier which I think is rather exciting for them, but you know I said this already two years ago and then they had a really bad finish to the season. Questions have to be asked of Lazio because you always think Lazio have it together and then they don't. So a uh, big, big shock for them. Cremonese came out to play against Juve. Uh, really creating chances, uh, having a goal. This it was a rather open game. Yes, Juve pressuring more and having more chances. But uh, for a small side like Cremonese, they still have not won. This was a very, very spirited performance, and this is typical for Kremlin's because whenever I, I, I see them, they actually play quite spirited. Um, and not only had their goal this round, they hit the outside of, of the post. I think they would have well deserved the draw, despite Juventus again, to be fair, also creating the majority of the chances. And then it's a Milik free kick. Uh, very nicely taken, it goes by the inside of the post in, all fine. However, there were three players in the wall. Put the fourth player in and stay tight. And this is never going to get, get, get in. And you get a, get a nil-nil out, out of the game. So, um, I don't want to say lucky win for Juventus. However, it's unlucky for Cremonese to not have gone out for that. Because uh, up until that point, you really were deserving the draw in the 91st. You give one up. Um, Fiorentina won one against Monza. Um, but it's all about... This round was definitely all about Inter Napoli, a game that Inter desperately needed to win to have still a chance not only to get back maybe in a title fight, which is still a stretch for them, but also to get back into contention for a Champions League spot, especially with Juve, Milan and Roma already winning. And boy, they overwhelmed Nap Nap Napoli. Napoli had a really, really hard, hard time getting a grip of the midfield. And it was always the long balls out from Onana onto Lukaku. And most of the game then were more or less about um, Inter missing big chances. Yes, Napoli had the occasional one, but it was all Inter who came with a loads of power into the game. Had two or three really, really big chances in the first half. Had other major misses early to start the second half. And I was really at that moment thinking, boy, are Napoli going to get out with a lucky nil nil here? No. Uh, Mkhitaryan gets the ball at midfield, plays a long ball to Di Marco. He crosses in at Eddie, Eddie, Eddie Dzeko. First attacking the near, near post and making the other route. Gets himself free. Heads it in from short range. 56. It's 1-0 for Inter. 
And at that point, an inter inter could hold a little bit back without being uh, really under under pressure, but it came late on, um, especially, you know, when then uh, Simeone, uh, Raspadori and so on came out, there were more chances created and uh, Ras Raspadori late on had a really big chance uh, to equalize. And I gotta say, uh, begrudgingly, this was Inter's night that Inter really deserved this uh, game. I hope it's not a sign for things to come for Napoli because Napoli did, did this was one of the few games where I really thought that Napoli did not look con convincing. Um, we gotta see where this goes. Uh, we have seen Napoli start brightly before and around you know 15, 20, 20 games looking re really good and then, and then collapsing. I hope for them this is not, not the case because before the World Cup, they were probably the most exciting team to watch. So a major, major, major setback for them. Another setback also for Udinese, uh, who really have been a good team uh, in this season so far. But ever since kind of mid-October can kick them around, they have been falling down in only 1-1 one -one against Empoli. So... Standings, you see Napoli's lead has been cut. It's now only five points to Milan and Milan and Inter suddenly uh, within touching distance, both with an 11% chance of uh, getting this title. Uh, it seems Napoli, Milan and Inter, the teams very much set on the Champions League and even Juventus look rather good. And remember how bad Juventus looked at the beginning of the season. However, I also say it's very cozy. The two Roman teams here sitting at 30, Atalanta, also not far far away it's now Udinese falling out so I think we're stuck with the same seven that we had for a long time I'm not sure if Torino Fiorentina have it or even Bologna have it to break into this top half on the bottom it's still Sampdoria Cremonese and Verona uh, with Spezia also dangling around there Salernitana not looking uh, that that career Monza we have to see where it goes it will be fight but especially Sassuolo is in there now that was not expected at all. Uh, if we go over to the expected standings, of course, on bottom, Verona, Sampdoria, Cremonese is still those three. But, you know, still loads to, to, to play. There's 22 rounds to play, so the majority of the season is still ahead. Milan and Inter almost neck to neck now, chasing Napoli, who still have a rather comfy cushion up front. As for upcoming games, we have already this weekend a uh, round where... Milan Roma is the stand, stand, stand of fixture. Uh, have an eye on Bologna against Atalanta. I think this could also be a rather interesting one, uh, which should be, I think, on the Monday. Uh, there, um, Inter having a away game to Monza. Hmm. Let's see, Juve against Udinese at home. I don't expect much there. And, uh, and Napoli could back, bounce back against, against Sampdoria, but be careful, Sampdoria might well. But you know, let's see if an angry Nap, na, 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 Napoli can do something. I don't know if I will do a video after this round, so i give you also the Coppa Italia round. I may, might wait for that. Only the first four fixtures will uh, be played in the midweek because the other four um, are then played the week after. I think there's a Super Coppa between yeah, Milan and Inter coming up as well somewhere in there, which I probably will not watch, although it's Milan. Um, as always, Coppa Italia fixtures in the round of 16 the big name teams have a home game uh, which is always a little bit disappointing uh, and you know you see only two Serie B sets because all the teams have already been eliminated in the stretch before uh, Milan Torino is the standout fixture I would say because Torino is a kind of a goodish team this time around and it seems so familiar because Milan always seems to play Torino although they didn't play them last year so that's it for me on what happened in Italy. Please let me know what you thought about the games there. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.